first thing of great substance that has changed in the Christian tradition is our understanding of the Bible. The Bible, because of the doctrine of divine revelation, was thought to contain the unchangeable truths of religion and of morality. And when, from about 200 years ago, we came to accept the fact that the Bible was a set of human books which say different things, some of which are in conflict with one another. You see, the Bible did not have a divine origin, but were books which reflected the ignorance and even superstitions and other inadequacies of the time in which they were written, as well as, of course, containing a tremendous amount of uh, wisdom which lasts for a much longer time. But nevertheless, they're human books. And from, from that time onwards, uh, the, each of the great traditions, particularly Judaism, Christianity, have had to divorce themselves from that sense that they've got everything in black and white and are left now on their own resources first of all in, in interpreting these books and then going beyond them to accept all the new knowledge that the whole scientific enterprise has opened up for us. Indeed, one could actually think of the scientific enterprise as a new form of revelation. That it, it has revealed things our ancestors knew nothing about. The Bible was still appealed to as the absolute guide on moral issues. And, and we've had to come to terms with the fact that on moral issues it can be wrong. It, it was wrong on slavery, for example, and that led to a civil war in, in the United States. And, of course, the current debate is on homosexuality. It, the Bible, of course, rejects all homosexual acts uh, quite clearly. Well, all I have to say is, once again, the Bible is wrong. It's wrong because the ancients knew very little about the complexity of the sexual nature of, of the human species and how each individual is a, on a certain point different points on a spectrum of sexuality. Well, that's a scientific discovery, as it were, of the latter part of the 20th century, which the churches are finding it very difficult to come to terms with. Religion and science have come into opposition with one another over the last uh, 200 years, perhaps a little more. Now it's important to understand what religion and science are. Religion has to do with what I call the, the spiritual dimension of human existence and of, and of human culture. It has to deal with the questions of is there any purpose in life and, and, and how can we get the best out of life and so on. Science is knowledge. The word science simply means knowledge. Now until the time of Galileo onwards, religion and science were never in conflict. In fact, they, they, in, in some respects, they were one and the same thing. Uh, so that uh, if you go further back, so take, for example, the opening chapter of Genesis. Now, this is just as much an example of ancient science as it is an example of ancient religion. They were one and the same thing. Indeed, scientists today are searching for what they call the theory of everything. That is, one theory which will help to explain everything in existence. Well, we've had such a theory for two and a half thousand years, and there it is in the first chapter of Genesis. It's a wonderful theory, a scientific theory. Unfortunately, it's a scientific theory which is no longer adequate. And in trying to 
defend it as religious people do. They are in fact defending an ancient piece of science which has been shown to be inadequate and is being replaced by modern science.